Is this your office or something? No. No, Smiley didn't call back again. Hector, are you in some kind of jam? Me? Oh, no, no, no. Of course not. I I told you Smiley's out raising some money, and I, I just want to see how he's doing. You mean who he's conning, don't you? Now, was that nice? I thought you liked old Smiley. Can I ask you something, Hector? Old Smiley. He didn't ever get into any big trouble back in Michigan, did he? I mean, like cops and robbers type trouble? Why do you want to ask me a thing like that? Well, I got this friend who's outside of Flinch, wrote me this dumb letter and made a crack about a guy with the same name who held up a bank. Bank? Oh, hey, come on. Could you see Smiley doing a thing like that? Well, I asked Calvin Stoner to check it out, but he's been so preoccupied lately. But... Sid's Tavern? Yes, Mr. Wilson. I will see if Mr. Wilson is available. It's your boss. Hey, Smiley, how are things going out on the road? I found her, heck, found our little fugitive from justice. That's oh. great, oh, that's great. Yeah, last night after I talked to you, I drove into the next town, and bang, there it was, her little cab sitting right out in front of a motel. I'm looking at it right now. <laughs> now I gotta think of a way to get to her. Well, just be careful, all right? Listen, Smiley, you aren't gonna try that sheriff routine again, are you? Some real cop may spot you. Well, just don't take any chances. If Raven Whitney figures out who you are, we're all in for it. Just don't worry. Twenty million dollars, and I don't have enough change for a coin machine. Who is it? You got any change here, Mrs. Whitney? Thirty-five for the room leaves uh, three hundred and fifty dollars. Wait a minute, you said 25 for the room, and that leaves 475. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Forgot. Uh, how come you're carrying such big bills around, honey? None of your business. I think I got it figured out. You're a bank robber. Thanks for the change. Now, if you'll excuse me. I think I'll call the cops and find out. I'm running. Well, well. But not from the police. From my husband. He's an animal. Well, I figured you were married. The ring. Observant, aren't you? You get that way in the motel business. Anyway, my husband's a gambler, and that's why I have all these big bills. And I told him that if he continued to gamble, I was going to leave him. You did, too, didn't you? Took some of them big bills with you. Well, a girl has to live, doesn't she? Anyway. You don't want him to catch up with me, do you? Because if he does, he's going to call the police, and that means they'll come and take me back to him, and he's going to beat me up again. I wouldn't want to see that happen, not to that pretty face. Tell me something. Do you know a sheriff named Floyd C. Beauregard? No. Nope. Well, he and my husband are gambling friends, and they drink together, and I think he sent him after me. Maybe we can make a deal. Uh, yeah. Uh, don't worry, honey. I'll protect you. Nobody will know you're here. Oh, if you need something to eat, there's a tea room next door. The cop wouldn't be seen dead there.
Wolfie Thorne. Sounds like a gangster, but I guess that's who you have to deal with when you're a fugitive. Oh, Skye. What am I going to do? It certainly was a surprise to find out I'm not the only one who's after Jeff Brown. Made me feel a bit less lonely. You know you're not the only one. You know I'm still here to help you. What happened to Spencer's name? Aren't the two of you still partners? Sometimes I wonder. Never mind. Tell me more about what this woman said. She's not this woman. She is my Aunt Geraldine. She told me about a police detective here. His name is Damien Tyler, and apparently he's been after Jeff Brown for years. A police? Does that mean your friend was a criminal? Well, assuming he was, would you find that surprising? No, I suppose not. Well, it seems this Detective Tyler... Well, Tyler isn't his real name. Fowler Wilcox was his father, and his father apparently worked for the State Department in a very sensitive job. Now, Jeff Brown worked for him. Did you know that? No, you see, Jeff never told me specifically what he had done here in the States. He was very mysterious about having some secret government-type job. But he never told me what exactly. Well, he was Fowler Wilcox's assistant, and Fowler Wilcox committed suicide. But is there necessarily a connection? Yeah, well, Detective Tyler seems to think that there was. You see, there were some stolen documents. Tyler believes that Brown stole them and took them to Europe in hopes of selling them to someone. In Switzerland? Maybe. I'm thinking about those mad things that Jeff used to talk about. Perhaps they weren't quite so mad. See, I didn't pay much attention to him. I may have made a mistake. There may have been more to Jeff Brown than I knew. But, Sky, none of this helps us prove that he was the imposter. Yes, but don't you see this detective Tyler has had suspicions about Jeff Brown as well? We have quite a lot in connection with Detective Tyler then, don't we? Yes, we do, quite a lot. And I am going to set up an appointment to meet this detective, Tyler. The sooner the better. Kowalski, I expect you to take care of that right away. Hey, you. Mike the cop, how you doing? Hey, Damien. Chief, welcome back. <laughs> don't you expect me to say that I'm glad to be back, because I'm not. Hey, I don't expect that, believe me, especially considering the reason that you had to cut your honeymoon short. I'm just as glad that I'm going to be able to sit in on this hearing. I'll make sure Val Ducci doesn't get carried away with himself. It's been quite a few years since he's got one of my guys, and I think he must be bloodthirsty by now. Oh, I haven't met Captain Valducci yet, fortunately. Nobody likes to meet the head of internal affairs, but you're a good cop. You got nothing to worry about. Oh, I didn't have anything to worry about until I decked Sammy Wheaton and got myself suspended. You're going to stick to this story now, that this is all just a frame-up? He did it, Chief, I swear it. Look, it was the perfect design for him to get back at me for having done that undercover work on him. If he pulls this thing off, I'm going to lose one of the most important things in my life, Chief. That gold badge. Wait, we're her sister, Miss... It's not fair. What isn't fair, Mitzi? He just looks so depressed. Then don't look at me, okay? I can't do that. You're my roommate. I, if you're depressed, it's my duty to undepress you. Look, Mitzi, my paying half the rent does not entitle me to cheering up privileges, all right? Hey, I'm also your friend. What are friends for, right? Well, the trouble is I'm not in such a great mood myself. Mitzi, don't worry about me, okay? You know, maybe we should work out a schedule or something, huh? You mean so that we're both not depressed at the same time? Oh, it's worth a try, right? <laughs> Didi, I am going to undepress you. Mitzi. Ah, no, no. <sighs> Yo, Didi. Yeah. Come on, Didi, smile. No. Please. Nice try, Mitzi.
We are talking about a major depression here, aren't we? Can you blame me? You and Calvin have broken up before, and you've always gotten back together again. Mitzi, those other times, I thought that Calvin's marriage was over. This time, Calvin himself told me that's not the case. No, wait a minute. He didn't actually say that, No, did he? no, he didn't. Not in so many words. But he was put to the test. And he failed. I mean, he really failed. You mean that letter to his wife asking He him tore it up? He tore it up, Mitzi. Now, what... What better proof do I need for Calvin's real feelings? Who it is? Who are you? Kenny Ram. Probably more bad news, huh? <laughs> but all hail the conquering hero! Strike up to the band! Let's all have a celebration. Give me a kiss, honey. Oh, I missed you. Cliff, why didn't you tell us you were back in town? What? You spoiled the surprise? Hey. Look what I bring you. Flowers for you and flowers for you. Oh, they're beautiful. Why don't you take the paper off, Missy? Oh, Cliff, they're beautiful. Ah, uh, some things never change. Mm. Oh, look, look. Presents from faraway places. Chicago? Look, for you, ah. something from the Windy City. Hey. And for you, my friend and my associate. Essences of Michigan Avenue. Thank you. Make you irresistible to Calvin. Oh, Steak sauce. Well, yeah, just in case your girls want to fix me a steak. Well, I get the idea. Uh, <laughs> hey, Cliff, look, why don't we stop all this clowning around? Tell me, what happened in Chicago? Is the trial over? Yeah, trial is over. Verdict is in. I won the case. They even gave me a standing ovation. That's what they love you. <laughs> Congratulations, partner. Thank you. Did you get paid? Sure, I got the check in my pocket. Not only that, I'm handling his corporate accounts here in Monticello. Sounds as though you're almost solvent. Well, I haven't built my empire yet. But I can pay this month's office rent. Good. That's great news. Uh, Dee Dee and I, we were just like sitting here talking about how miserable everything was, and then you come in and cheer us up. Right, Dee Dee? What's uh, this uh, about you being miserable? Look, Cliff, I don't want to talk about it. You come in here with all this great cheer. I don't want to spoil it. That's some bad news. No meat. Ah, forget about it. Grab your coats. We're going to Sid's. Oh, count me out. I, I don't. You, I, you, you, you are coming with us. Dee Dee, grab your coat. We are going out on the town. Lots more. She totally turned the tables on me. I don't know. I guess I'm just not a very good judge of character. No, I guess you're not. I don't see why you couldn't have figured this out in the first place. I don't know that either. But I do have this fur coat business figured out. What fur coat business? Well, Eddie Lormer uh, came over to my place last night, said he wanted to bury the hatchet. <laughs> Probably wanted to bury it in the back of your skull. Well, that's what I figured, but he brought a present. I mean, a mink present. What's this all about? Well, you see, Eddie Lormer thought it would be a good idea if I made amends with Poppy Johnson. He said the way to do that would be to give the woman something that she would really like, you know. Like a fur coat? Right. He even gave it to me to give to her. But can't you see this is obviously another setup? Of course I see it. I was going to stuff the thing down the guy's throat, but he threw it on my table and took off. Well, I hope you got it back to him. Well, I followed him to the salvage company, but he locked himself in his office, and I just left it there. I don't like the sound of this, Tyler. Just what kind of game is he up to? Well, you just can't tell with that guy, but I'll tell you one thing. I am not going to be framed this time. I just don't know. The setup doesn't look right to me. Mr. Loreman, I got a package from. Uh, he's out right now. But you have a delivery, you can leave it right here. Well, it's photographs he wanted developed. Uh, he wanted them real fast. Make sure he gets it personally. It's confidential. Thank you.
confidential, huh? I hope you're going to cheer up this gang around here. That's why I came back. They wanted me to stay in Chicago. They offered uh, my opportunity to run the city there, but I said, no, I've got more important business in Monticello. Uh, <laughs> OK, I'm starving. Let's see. Itzy, you're wonderful. Sad or happy, you're still hungry. Well, I am certainly not depressed anymore. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 hey. It's a public place. If only Calvin would get here with a divorce paper, everything would be perfect. Hey, what's this about a divorce paper? Uh, Cliff, I don't want to talk about it. Okay, let's order. Well, you know the menu better than anybody. We got everything tonight, except steak. Oh, no. Sid, that's fine with me. I'll settle for hamburger. Good, good. We got plenty of ketchup. <laughs> oh, uh, excuse me, girls. Yeah? I see a long-lost friend of mine. <clears throat> hey, Hector, how you doing? Oh, Cliff, Cliff, good, good. Uh, good to see you. When'd you get back? Oh, just a couple minutes ago. <sighs> What's the story with the maskers? The who? Oh, no theater, huh? It's all over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The maskers, the practical joke, it's all finished. Well, what about Raven? What did she do? Well, she did just what we thought she'd do. Nothing. She didn't want anybody to laugh at her, so she just let the whole thing pass. So far, she hasn't told anything to anybody. Well, where is she now? Oh, oh, she's uh, on a vacation someplace. Uh, nobody knows where exactly. Hector? Uh, yeah. You're on the air again. Oh, oh, thanks. Excuse me. He gets more phone calls than the Weather Bureau. Hey, Smiley, what's happening? Where are you? The special, please. Oh, good evening, Miss. Oh, would you like to sit over here? Uh, sure, that'll be fine. I think I'll sit uh, on this side, okay. Would you care for something to drink? Oh, I would love a double vodka martini. Oh, we don't serve liquor. But if that's what you want, there's a tavern down the street where all the men go. But I don't think you'd want to go there. I'll just get you a menu. All of the men, huh? That sounds great. Just my luck, I'd run into a cop. All this great food. It's for the party. And a fresh box of Arm & Hammer baking soda keeps everything fresh. Clean. Okay, okay, just don't take any chances, Molly. You stuck your neck out too much as it is. She's seen me three times and doesn't know it. The judge in the courtroom, the cab driver, and Sheriff Floyd C. Beauregard. Yeah, yeah, I know you're a genius, but this Fox is no dummy. The next disguise may be one too many. This disguise is going to be the best of all. Well, just remember what happens if it doesn't fool her. We all may wind up disguised as convicts. And all I know, Brother Heck, is that there's around $20 million sitting in that motel room, and tomorrow it's going to be in my hands. And... We're going to be skipping the country, not Mrs. Raven Whitney. I hope you're right. It was his own idea to write the letter, Cliff. Calvin thought he could express himself better in a letter than he could in person. It's easy to write your feelings down on paper. I understand that. Oh, sure, I understand, too, now. You can't tear up a personal confrontation. It's not made of paper. That's not what I meant. How do you know he tore it up? How can you be sure? I'm sure. Dee, that doesn't mean he'll never ask Star for a divorce. It just means he needs a little more time, that's all. So, Mitzi, what am I supposed to do in the meantime? What do I owe you, Sid? Thought I'd pay cash tonight, seeing as how you've been so nice. So all you had was a couple of beers and a half a dozen phone calls. <laughs> Let's just say this one's on the house. Ah, Eureka. Thanks a lot, Sid. You're a pal. Hector, are you really sure about what I ask you about? about Smiley? About his being a bank robber? <laughs> Forget it, Sid. Smiley's just a clown. You can't take him seriously. <laughs> don't worry. I don't.
hope Raven Whitney does. This special is carrot cutlet. Um, I'll think about that, okay? Just take your time. Excuse me, young lady, but would you mind terribly if I joined you? Well, you know there are some tables around the corner. Yes, um, I know, but I hate eating alone. <laughs> well, 